Thank you, Lillian, for the introduction, and thank you very much for coming. Um, I'm Siwe, I am a medical uh, engineer and postdoc researcher working at TU Munich. And as you just heard, in my, in my free time, I like to say it's my band. Now, let's get to work. The topic of my talk tonight is uh, cochlear implants, also known as artificial hearing. Hearing has been an important part in our lives. Every day we get to hear sounds like speeches. Jede Jugend im Alter weicht, hört jede Lebensstufe. Music. And many other things. The key organ that is responsible for our hearing is the cochlea, which is the snail-like structure shown in the picture here. And then there is the auditory nerve, which is the central nerve responsible for hearing that goes from within the cochlea all the way to the brain. We know that the sound is basically vibration. So when the sound comes into the ear canal, it vibrates the eardrums and then gets transmitted by the ear bones all the way into the cochlea. There exist some specific cells called the hair cells. They sense the vibration and then they activate the auditory nerve to create electrical impulses with a shape like this. The activation of auditory nerve within the cochlea is dependent on the frequency of the sound, also known as the pitch of the sound. And here is a video that's going to show you um, the difference in terms of the location depending on the frequency. So note that for each individual frequency, there's only a narrow band of the auditory nerve in the cochlea gets activated. So after the electrical impulse is, is generated, after the activation of the auditory nerve, the electrical signal gets transmitted into the brain via the nerve. The brain receives the signal interpreted and then we hear. So therefore, the hair cells are very important because it's responsible for converting the mechanical vibration into electrical signals. Unfortunately, it's very fragile and um, it's highly susceptible to noise damage, such as loud music in nightclubs. And unfortunately, unlike um, Many other cells in our body, once they die, they won't regrow. They'll just stay dead. And that leads to permanent hearing loss. And so, we would think since the basis of hearing is electricity, then what if we bypass the dead hair cells? and directly activate the auditory nerves with a small amount of electricity from some electronics. Would that be able to help to restore hearing? That is the idea behind the cochlear implant. So here is a picture of a, wearing, uh, of a person wearing the cochlear implant, and here is how it looks like in the inside. Again, we see our old friend, the cochlea, and then also the auditory nerve. We notice that the cochlear implant has two parts, the external and internal part. The internal part of the cochlear implant include the microphone and speech processor that goes behind the ear, and also the transmission coil goes on the skin or on the hair, depending on if the person has hair or not. <laughs> and then, the internal part includes a receiver and stimulator goes under the skin. And an array of 12 to 20 electrodes that goes, uh, micro-electrodes, sorry, that goes inside the cochlea. So when the sound comes in, it gets picked up by the microphone and converted into digital signal by the speech processor. And then the signal gets transmitted by a transmission coil into the receiver. After the signal being interpreted, 
depend on the property of the sound, such as frequency. Um, the stimulator sends out a small amount of electrical current through the microelectroarray to activate all the auditory nerve within the cochlea. Again, it creates the electrical impulses, which gets carried through the nerve into the brain. Cochlear implant has been considered as the most successful neural implants nowadays. It has been capable of restoring certain extent of hearing, especially speech understanding, for more than 500,000 recipients. So you may wonder how um, the sound will sound like to the cochlear implant recipients. So we, I was playing uh, an audio speech at the beginning of the presentation, uh, which goes like that. Durch jede Lebensstufe, durch jede Weisheit auch und jede Tugend zu ihrer Zeit. And here is a comparison that simulates how that audio would sound like to the cochlear implant recipients. So, as you can imagine, the excitement for the recipients for they found that they are able to hear. But at the same time, you also notice that there was a lot of noise in the audio and how the noise was distorting the original sound. So, it would be quite difficult for the recipients to understand what they hear, especially after a long time of deafness. And they need certain amount of time of training to learn to hear again. And that's what we call the uh, auditory rehabilitation. So, as you would have figured, that the cochlear implants nowadays is far from being perfect. Um, one of the major challenges is that it's difficult for the recipients to differentiate fine pitches. And therefore, it's difficult for them to understand tonal languages it's difficult for them to understand the emotions in the speech because it's normally related to the pitch in our voice. For example, there's normally a difference in the meaning between when I say ah and when I say ah. But the cochlear implant recipients won't be able to detect it. And next is that it's, it's uh, almost impossible for them to hear music. Again, I'm going to play a comparison of two audios. One is the audio that we, the, of the music that we heard at the beginning. And here is how it would sound like to the cochlear implant recipients. For the last four years, I've been working at TU Mille to develop computer models of cochlear implant. And the model is based on this full set of medical images. Um, sorry, the models, of course, um, to help develop the technology. Anyway, um, the computer model, it was based on a full set of medical images that shows the detailed and complete geometry of the cochlea and the surrounding structure. And um, the images was having such a high resolution that it was capable of showing a small object as small as 6 micrometer, that is 0 0.00006 meter. And this, is, this video is going to show you how the computer model looks like. Um, first, uh, so this transparent object is the fluid inside the cochlea. Uh, the semi-transparent object is the 
microelectrode array and with these shiny metal plates representing the microelectrodes. There are altogether 12 microelectrodes in this model. And this yellow object is the auditory nerve. And from here you can see that the nerve goes from within the cochlea all the way out and leads to the brain, this side. And this model was embedded inside the skull of a human head model. So, earlier we realized in those two audios that there was a lot of noise in what um, cochlear implant recipients hear. And now let's talk about why. So here is the simulation results from the, from the computer model that shows the activation pattern of the auditory nerve if the electrical current is delivered from each of the 12 electrodes individually in the model. And we notice that for a single electrode, uh, oh, sorry, and also the redder the area is, um, the higher the possibility of the auditory nerve gets activated. So we notice that for a single electrode, a large area of the auditory nerve gets activated. And it's even reaching into the area that was supposedly responsible by other electrodes. And we notice that from one of the videos that um, only a narrow band of the auditory nerve is supposed to be responsible for one single frequency. Which means that one, uh, one complex implant electrode is going to activate a wide, uh, a wide area that is supposed to be responsible for a wide range of frequencies. And since the noise that we just heard is practically made of um, a huge uh, well, a huge range of frequencies, which means that the noise is practically unavoidable in current uh, cochlear implants devices. And therefore, we need to um, develop um, the cochlear implants by finding a better way to activate the auditory nerves. And I hope that I'll be able to tell you what the, those um, methods will be very soon with the help of my computer model. So, in summary, what we learned in the last 15 minutes uh, is that cochlear implant works by activating the auditory nerve directly with a small amount of electrical current. It's capable of restoring certain degree of hearing, especially speech understanding. Despite that they are still facing a lot of challenges, such as the noise problem, um, they still consider as one. Uh, they still consider as the, the, the most successful neural implants nowadays. And hopefully, with the um, advancement of this technology, it's going to be able to restore full hearing for the cochlear implant recipients. That's the end of my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steven. Oh, many questions now. <laughs> Maybe we'll go like this. And uh, this. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. Right, thanks for the presentation. I was wondering. Um, with the uh, development of the technology, because the idea would be to uh, extract these older implants, and when we develop new newer implants, implant new implants, the new implants. Is there any risks? Has that already been done? Extracting old implants to and the new ones with the new technologies? Yes, please. Okay. Um, so the question is that is it so is there going to be any risk uh, for the implant removal? Um, well, most of the time that's pretty much the same risk as you would do any surgery. It's the anesthesia and also the potential of uh, getting infection. Um, otherwise, 
removing itself will have much problem. Thank you for your talk. I wanted to ask you, did you hear about the latest news? U.S. American University has developed a kind of chemical which recreates the hair in the, in the ear. So you don't need any cochlea anymore. They have made some, uh, some researches on mice which work well and now they are trying to implement it on human beings. And this would be the, this was published about three or four weeks ago. So it would be very interesting if you could say something to this. What is the status of this? Okay, so your question is about uh, what would happen to this technology if we were able to regrow the hair cells yes. in future. Yes. Okay. Because that's the goal, then you can hear again. Yes, for sure, definitely. I mean, this technology also as uh, same as other type of neural implants such as retina implants and also cortical implants, they are the purpose of these implants is to restore the function. Um, if we are really able to regrow like every part in our body, then of course there is um, no need for any other type of implants. But for the moment, um, I would say that it is still necessary to develop the neural implants because um, right now, as you would say, it's only in animal experiments and yes. um, it would also be quite difficult to... Um, it, first, it also depends on what animals they are using because some animals, they, it's actually easy to um, to control where the, um, the drug will go inside the cochlea, but some will be different. Like for example, in human, the, the cochlea is in, uh, very deep inside the skull. Um, they are in a status, they are asking for people who would like to join this research. Finally, so in the US, human beings to try it out in their ear who have this damage. So it's quite far, so I hope it will be further developed. Well, hopefully. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, and there was another question on that side. Yeah. Uh, so as long as we wait for your improvements, do you have any tips if uh, we talk to uh, a person with a cochlear implantate? Um, how uh, can I speak or how have I have to speak uh, to that? The person understands me better. Is there any trick? Um, okay. the, question, the question is, is there any trick to speak uh, to the complete implant recipient so that they can better understand you? Um, I don't really think so. I mean, the purpose of this implant is so that they are um, they are capable of communicating just as normal. Also, of, although, of course, I mean, one thing is that do not speak with them under very noisy situation because it would be difficult for them to understand. Uh, otherwise, well, you know, just make sure that he's wearing the. <laughs> <laughs> we will go for just one last question. And sorry, I saw her first. <laughs> but you can always ask more questions in the break, okay? He will be available. He will not eat just to answer your questions. <laughs> so, as you mentioned, there was a 12 electron used in this, in this implant, right? 12 electrons, right? Um, it's normally 12 to 20 or yeah, more, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so does, it, does, it increase, does it increase resolution if you add the number of electrodes in this case? Would it improve their hearing? Yes, in a sense, 
but at the same time, it will also the noise will still be there. Like you can probably recruit, um, you can probably stimulate some, uh, you can have have some major frequency that you want at the peak area where you see the the most red area, but at the same time, um, it's still going to be very loud. So the noise will still be there. Just think about um, the old TV. Like if you turn it louder, the noise is still there. And then, then, what is your approach to increase resolution and decrease this noise uh, to develop a better version of the input? That could be a little bit more, a little bit complicated to explain in this one minute. Um, so, okay, it's just mainly to change the... Um, so right now, what I just showed you earlier is that they're using the ground, uh, using the... Uh, the receiver coil as the ground, and then um, modern polar stimulation sorry, um, from each of the electrode individually. But we can somehow um, have a bipolar stimulation with it, within just using the cochlear implant electrode, but like within the cochlear, um, so that to make it more focal. Thank you.